What's happening, party people? Mark Zamanoff here, your favorite friendly neighborhood fitness ninja, and my homie, Jonathan Loudermilk. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great, man. What's good, baby? It's Dude, new, it, year, new, new year, new me. <laughs> I hate that with passion. <laughs> And I, I hope that, that all you fit pros listening to this, like, I hope collectively we can squash that damn thing. <laughs> oh, my God, it's terrible. I, I love getting underneath your skin, man. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I know, I know. It's true, though, man. Like, that whole, like, oh, yeah, it's a new year. Now I'm going to try something. It's just like, and we all know, like, you just got to do it. Like there's no perfect day. There's no perfect time. You just make a decision. You just do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, uh, uh. anyway, 2021, welcome to episode number three of yeah, Real first Talk. episode Real of the Talk. year. And we got, and we got a hell of a story. At least Mark does. Yeah. I got a story. So we got a great topic for you guys today. Uh, but story time comes first because that's the real fun part. Um, so this one takes me back to my, to my lifetime fitness days. And we had this, we had this manager in the fitness department that he was, he was a hell of a salesman. He put up huge numbers, but man, he was a douche and, and nobody really liked this dude, but you, you just, you could learn from him. Like if you really wanted to up your sales game, like he's the dude you sat in and you listen and you watch the technique and, and he was ethical. It wasn't that he would. You know, he didn't rope anybody into doing anything they didn't want to, but he's just kind of a douchey dude. Nobody really liked him too much, but you had to respect the game because he was putting up these big numbers. So anyway, so one day he's in there working out with his girlfriend and she's doing stability ball crunches. So she's on the ball, she's doing these crunches and he wants to help her add a little resistance to it. So he gives her one of those bands, you know, the ones with the handles on them. Yeah. You see where this is going. Yeah. So, so, so she's holding the band like by her shoulders doing crunches and he's standing directly behind her and he's just, he's holding the band down low. You know, she's doing her crunches. She gets done with her set and then she just lets go. She <laughs> let go. She let go. She oh, just, no. let it, just, oh, so I'm done with my set. Back. Yep. I'm done with my set. And it came right back. And hit him square in the balls. <laughs> and, and, I had, and it was great because I was sitting at the training desk and I had just turned just in time to see this happen and, and, and unfold. And he just dropped like, like a sack of potatoes. And me and a couple of other coaches, we were sitting around like, oh, you know, you got that look on your face like you don't want to laugh out loud, but you kind of do, but you don't. <laughs> oh, my. Couldn't have happened to a greater guy. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> I never, ever saw him doing that exercise with his girlfriend or anyone else ever again <laughs> after that. Yeah, that's so funny, man. Like, I, I've definitely done that uh, a good bit of times training clients. And you know, I always preface it with like, hey, we're about to enter the circle of trust. <laughs> you know, what do you mean? I'm like, well, I'm going to hold this band here, right? So your goal is to not let go so I don't get slapped and you definitely don't want me to let go because it's going to slap back your head. Are we in agreement? <laughs> so we're in a circle of trust right now that if all else fails, we will hold on to our half. So that sound fair? And they're like, yes. <laughs> see, see, John, that's because you are a professional. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, I've had that happen to me, man. I actually, when you said that, I got like flashbacks, man. So I heard my junk just thinking about it, man. That ain't good. You can't have your, your peck again hit during the workout. It's going to throw everything off, especially if you try to close the deal. Cause now you fight back the anger. <laughs> <laughs> so, so for, for you boys and girls, if you're keeping track at home, that's three for three with uh, crotch stories. So we're going to try to keep the street going. I'm going to try to get 52 weeks of these, man. I got a hell of one for next week. Don't worry. I'm going to leave y'all hanging on that one. Y'all tune in next week. I got, I got a doozy for you. Um, oh, love it. But love yeah, it. man. So, so I know, you know, we kind of pow out a little bit about what we're going to hit, you know, with it being the new year. And obviously we've got business goals that we want to reach. And we've got uh, what I'll call areas of opportunity that we want to work on and all these different coaches. So, you know, what would you say those big three are that should be like the main focus? Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's our time to shine. And, and I've noticed even in my own business, I've noticed an uptick in interest early on. And traditionally, you know, I don't, I don't know about all you guys, but for me, 
the new year normally doesn't start off real big. Like it's kind of this slow build towards more of the end of January as people kind of start to figure out, okay, what do I want to do? What type of training do I want to do? Do I want to hire a coach or not? But I think this year is a little bit different because of what happened last year. And I think some people are so stir crazy and you know, the new year's craze is just starting a little bit earlier in my opinion. And so I'm seeing this uptick of interest and people reaching out and people looking for help way earlier than usual and looking to make a decision now and and move forward. So it's our time to kind of capitalize on that and make sure we're doing our part. So I think the, the first thing as a fit pro that we can do is follow up. And you know, if there is any time to follow up with people, it's right fucking now because it's in the forefront of everyone's mind. You know, there's more news stories, even just like in the news cycle, you see more stories about losing weight and getting healthy and try this smoothie recipe, you know, all the, all the BS that we see, but it really is in the forefront of people's minds. And all those people that you thought, you know, ah, they're, they're tire kickers or they're not really interested or they're just looking for free stuff. So what? Like reach back out, shoot them a text, give them a voicemail, send them a DM, like whatever information you have and however you could communicate with people. Now is the time to be following up with all those people that you were like, you know, I'd really like to work with that person and that person really needs some help. And, and, I, and I think if we don't do that, if we keep looking for the new lead, the new lead, the new lead and not follow up with the people that already raised their hand at some point, then we're missing a huge, huge opportunity. Yeah, and the, the way I look at it is, is we're not doing our job if we're not following up because, you know, everyone wants to say they're there to help people till they get told no a couple of times. And that <laughs> thing is real fat. Oh, I thought you were here to help people. Well, they told me no once. I'm like, dude, that was like six months ago. Well, I can happen in six months, right? So I think the goal with the follow-up, it's more mindset than anything. It's, you know, it's not the pre-judge, it's the pre-qualify. And there's right. a big difference with that. You know, a lot of times, and I hear you say this all the time, don't spend other people's money, you know? So when we're going in there, like, okay, I'm not going to prejudge them because I haven't talked to them in a month or two or six or never, right, in some cases. Um, but if you go in there going, let me just figure out where this person is in the decision-making process of doing something, not right. even necessarily hiring me, right? Are they are they ready? Like you said, they're like stir crazy. And they're like, dude, I gotta like get moving. <laughs> I gotta do so. Get me out, get me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have to get more throwback for you. Mister, <laughs> mister. Um, and they're ready to do something. Others are going to be shopping. Like you said, they're like, well, do I do Peloton? Do I go back to the orange theory? Do I get online coach? Do I, you know, oh, God knows all the other gizmos out there. Right. And those are people we just need to figure out, okay, cool. What is it that you really need? And you're just going in there and going, well, here's how I can solve your problem based on what you offer. And then just simply asking, would you like my help with that? And I think you'll be surprised if a lot of people are receptive to that. Like you said, you made a great point about people being stir crazy, wanting to do something. Um, And then the last person you'll find is curious where, you know, like you said, they're still trying to like figure out. Like, what am I wanting to do? And they might not pull the trigger this week. It might not even be this month, but maybe in February or March, when they're like, okay, I've gotten clear, here's what I want to do. Because of the follow-up you did in January, you're planning to seed and you're going to be able to reap the harvest of that from the months to come if you're doing that work now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and you just, you never know where somebody's thought process is until you ask them. And that was, you know, to your point, like ask, like you, you, we have to ask for the sale. We have to ask and say, would you be interested in having me help you? Whatever, whatever that goal is. And, and I think that's the missing step for so many fit pros is they just don't ask. And so the next person that they talk to goes, Hey, I'd like to work with you. Would you like to work with me? And they go, Oh, well, yeah, that's kind of what I've been looking for. They go, Oh, okay. Magic. <laughs> right. Like, what, what, t- tell me your secrets. I, I asked them if they wanted my help. What? <laughs> yeah, it, it's kind of that simple. If you if you choose to live your life that way, it doesn't have to be complicated. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So so the second the second big thing, and and really, you know, these last couple kind of go for well, really all of these go for all the time. But um, right now is add value. 
So your number two action step for growing your business is add value. And, and what I mean by that is, you know, we all possess this knowledge base that can serve people and help solve their problem. And we have to be willing to put that out there and share that information in any way that we can. So adding value can mean social media, adding value can mean going to a local, you know, um, supplement store or smoothie shop and saying, Hey, can I set up a table here? Can I spend an hour in your store and help people? Can I ask, can I answer questions, you know, networking with people that you've worked with in the past and just being available to share your expertise. And, you know, I, I know I say this a lot and I'll keep saying it. There's nothing that any of us provide for anyone that can't be found free somewhere. But what people pay us for is fast tracking the process. They pay us for accountability. Um, they pay us so they don't have to think about it. So we get to do the thinking and they can focus on what they need to focus on. And so that value comes from just being open and honest and going here, here's what I know. You know, here's things that can help you get started. Whether you work with me or not, doesn't even matter. And I think the more people that see that, oh, like, this person really a is passionate about what they do and, and honestly wants to help other humans, regardless of whether they're a client or not. Eventually those people go, well, if they're giving all that information away for free, then what happens if I pay them and, and I'm their client? Surely there's more. And so I, you know, keep in mind that what that value really means and make sure it's make sure it's not the trying to rope people into some BS, but it's actually just real good value that you're providing. Yeah, like, you know, one of the, the biggest mindset, uh, my, my, mindset, I meant mind shift. I don't know why that came out. Mind shift sets that I had was, you know, really thinking about like, okay, how do you become the expert of what you do? Because everybody wants to be the expert, right? You should. Right? You should want to be the expert. Right, you should want to be, right? Just being, hey, I'm the best at what I do. Is the way you get there is you get there by actually helping people first. Like when you help people, enough people up front and you do that, like you said, it's going to kick in there and start thinking like, okay, what do I get if I actually pay for this? And it kicks in this really cool thing called the law of reciprocity. And, and the easiest way to think about this is like, think about a time somebody did a solid for you. You know, might, maybe someone gave you their truck to like move the stuff out of your house or whatever. Did you feel like you wanted to get back to them or did you feel like you didn't want to get back to them? Well, most people I believe are good people right now there's a few yep. shit bags out there <laughs> always but most people i believe are genuinely good people and they're going to naturally want to reciprocate that when you use that technique for the power of good or the jedi as i like to look at it using the the good force not the sip ones um you can use it as a powerful tool to move people and influence them to make those better choices and obviously they're going to choose you as their fitness provider when you're the one doing that leg work up front by actually helping them first. And, you know, I know it sounds too simple to be true, but it's the same thing we all get taught when we first started. Like when you first get a gym job, what did they do Mark? Hey, go on the floor and go like show people exercises. And right. Stuff. Right. <laughs> and go talk to them about nutrition. Now, are there smarter ways to do this now? Yeah. There's, there's better ideas than going there and, you know, trying to pick up random people off the gym floor. But it's the same idea, though, is actually helping people first, which is what breeds that conversation. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's leaving with that, leading with that servant attitude. Yep. And, and, you know, there's, you have to get rid of that scarcity mindset, too, that I think a lot of people have of, of like, well. Dude, so I got, I got to ask you, did you ever work with trainers that were like afraid of people stealing their workouts? Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> like I literally knew a trainer that like used to lock his programs up. Like he would lock his little cupboard, like oh his little pull-out drawer, because he didn't <laughs> want people stealing like his secret exercises. I was like, do you gotta be shitting me? <laughs> like, and, and, and it was always the ones like doing some bullshit, single leg, juggling, you know, medicine ball, standing on a boat <laughs> ball, blindfolded while they whack them with a foam roller, you know, just like stupid shit. You're like, dude, no, like, we're not going to do any of that. You're fine. Right. But and then I see the other one too. I would see uh, the members that were too cheap to, to pay for a trainer. They would fall around the trainers and write down all of the exercises <laughs> they'd have their clients do. And then I would go watch them half-ass do it on their own, being like, dude, like, can I just save you some time? <laughs> I'll just give it to you. Did you ever watch Seinfeld? 
a little bit. So there was an episode where Elaine was, she was like following, she did exactly that. She went to a gym, she's watching a trainer and the client and she keeps gaining weight and getting pissed off. And then finally one day she goes in there and she like goes off on the trainer and finds out that he was working with his client to get her bigger, like to bulk her up. And Elaine's over there trying to lose weight and do what they're doing. (laughs) Yeah. It just used to boggle my mind when I'd see people like that, but in the day, like, yeah, you're going to get some of that, but you're going to get way more people that aren't like Elaine. They're like, man, can I just hire you? (laughs) I don't want to have to try to figure this stuff out on my own. So great. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. All right. uh, And number three, the number three way to grow your business right now is post on social media. Good grief. The interwebs. Send it to the internet. (laughs) Um, You know, I, I think there's still, there's still so many people that are working from home that are on their phones more than usual, that are on social media more than usual. Um, you know, the, the politics have finally died down, thank God. And, and so there's people that have come back because they got off, you know, social media for a little while because they don't want to yeah. see all that crap. It's the easiest way that we have to get in front of a large number of people at any given time. Like the easiest, unless you're one of those dudes, you see those videos where those dudes go stand in Walmart and like hop up on the, on the bag turnstile and start yelling shit, but they're like, they're all weird. Um, but uh, you know, outside of doing that, that that's not your crowd. People don't go to Walmart and yell out your services. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, where else are you going to shoot your message in front of a thousand people or 2000 people at one time, multiple times a day? Where else can you draw interest to you and what you do and who you are and what type of person you are than social media? There's not another platform. And, and if you're listening to this and you're famous, good for you. But for the rest of us, like we're still building our audience and we don't need that many people. I, you know, John and I say it all the time. Like most of you guys need like 20. You know, some of us need a little more because whatever, we own a gym or we have bigger aspirations. But I mean, 50, maybe a hundred. I don't know. I mean, at the, at the high end, most of you guys listening, if you had a hundred clients, you wouldn't know what to do with them right now anyway. So we just don't need that many people. And if you're not on social media and you're not posting and it's not all business related, it doesn't all have to be health and fitness, but if you're not following some methodology, then you're just, you're missing out and you're making things way harder on yourself. Just you, you can't hit the shots that you don't take plain and simple like you gotta show up to the ball game you gotta step up to the plate and you know I think the biggest thing people go through is like well I don't want to bother people or which what they're really saying is I don't want to get rejected by people not liking my post and commenting where you know at the end of the day people always start as stalkers first (laughs) then they become leads and then they become clients. Like, I cannot tell you how many times, you know, just talking to our clients, Mark, they're like, yeah, this person just like messaged me out of the blue and they've been following me for six months. It's a little creepy, but now they want to work with me. Yeah. It's like, that's how the process works, right? That people go through It's And if you even want to break it down to fitness terms, it's like the, the pre-contemplation phase and the contemplation, all the stuff we learned in, in our fancy search that we all paid such <laughs> wonderful money for. Um, it's the same thing people go through when they're checking out your stuff online, but you got to show up, right? And you got to show up even if you don't have a crowd in the stadium. And as you show up consistently, And you're letting people get to know who you are and you're adding value and you're putting out offers like, Hey, here's how I can help you. You're that eventually people are going to show up. They're going to take action. You're going to start getting results for them. And now you're going to get to showcase that. And then it's just going to increase and grow month over month. And you got this snowball effect, but you got to show up and you got to start now. Yeah. And, and the other side is it has to be consistent too. And, and, there's a couple of reasons why. So from a, from a technology standpoint, consistency with social media posting allows your post to be shown more often. So if you're posting three or four times a day, day after day after day, the likelihood of people seeing it is far greater than if you're posting once on Monday and twice on Wednesday, and then nobody sees you until Sunday. And then you post like five times on Monday and then nothing again, like the, the algorithms of social media don't reward that. But the other side of it, 
is if you are consistent, what you're showing your clients is the type of person that you are and the type of service that you can provide. And again, this is some subconscious shit that I, you know, I don't think a lot of people take into consideration. So if I'm looking for some type of service, I look for certain behaviors, especially with an individual, maybe not a, a, like a big company, but an individual, I look for certain behaviors and I'm like, is that a person that I wanna do business with? So if I'm looking for a coach and I see a coach online adding value, posting consistently, showing up, answering questions, being of, of service to people who aren't his clients, then the likelihood of me gravitating towards that person are far greater than somebody who posts once on Monday and nothing again till Wednesday and four times on Saturday and then they disappear for a week. Like there's some inconsistencies that show up there and, and I want my coach to be consistent. I want to know that they're going to be there for me and I don't want to wonder like, well, where'd that guy go? Oh, there he is. Oh, where'd he go? Oh, there he is. And you know, you may not think about it and the prospect may not consciously think about it, but it could be playing in their subconscious and affecting their decision making. Yeah. And, and here's the truth. Like what, what the prospect is thinking is like, if that person can't show up for themselves, how are they going to show up for me? You know, how we do one thing is how we do everything. And when you show up, rain, shine, snow, hot outside, doesn't matter. You're like, I'm here. I'm showing up every single day. You build that unspoken trust bond that you do what you say you're going to do when you say you're going to do that. And you're overcoming an objection right there, but just demonstrating who you are, because that is one of the big objections. Like I worked with this coach and this coach sucked and <laughs> I did this program and he never responded or this yeah. person, this, but you're overcoming that by simply being the example of what you're trying to attract. So there's a lot of stuff that and we could go super deep. That's like a whole nother episode that we could go into. But the other part, and this is something I've learned through 75 hard. And if you hear me talk about it, I'm sorry, but that's part of one of the rules of 75 hard. You got to tell people you've done 75 hard. <laughs> it's like CrossFit and being a vegan, you know, if you put all those together and nobody wants to talk to you. <laughs> anyway, um, when you start keeping the, the small promises that you make to yourself, and it might be posting twice a day or three times or whatever, um, your confidence is going to go up. And that's really what it comes down to on social media is whoever's the most confident is going to get the most business. If you're coming up and you're showing up insecure, well, it's probably because you're not keeping the promises when you're offline to yourself. And if someone has to choose between, do I want confident Mark or do I want insecure Bob over here? Which one am I going to pick? I want to pick the guy that knows what he's doing and knows he can deliver what he says he can deliver on. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and again, I, I don't, I don't think there's a lot of difference in the skill set that a lot of us have, you know, experience lends itself well, but you know, a lot of us have been doing this for a really long time. So when it comes down to actual training, there may not be a whole lot of difference in the skill set, but it's the delivery and the consistency and the confidence, as you just said, John, I think that's a great point of, of knowing your, your prospect feeling like they're making a good decision because of your confidence. Yeah. Because a lot of these people, they don't believe in themselves. No. Like a lot of the people that we start working with in the beginning, they don't, they don't think they can do it because they haven't done it yet. That's why they're hiring us. But if we're confident and we're showing up and we're positive and we're saying, you know what? I know you've struggled in the past, but I got you. Like I got a system in place. I got a track record like let's go, then it makes, it elevates them. And they're like, Oh, maybe I actually can do this finally. Yeah, man. I call it lending them your belief. Like, you know, if you're playing on a sports team and your coach is like, Hey guys, I think we might win today. It's like, well, <laughs> we're fucked. <laughs> awesome. Coach says we might win. <laughs> Woohoo! Let's go ahead and get ready for McDonald's already. Cause we already <laughs> lost the game, <laughs> but that's where that confidence comes in going. I'm going to solve your problem which is what they really want. They don't want the stuff. They yeah. don't care about the nutrition plan or how many times a week they get to talk to you or work out with you. Like that's just, that's just how we get there. And everyone's different. What they want at the end of the day is they want the problem solved and they want to know that you understand their situation. Like truly understand. I'm just saying you understand, but you actually understand and you have confidence that you can solve that problem. You do those two things and you're going to win this year. Amen to that. So quick little recap, three things to grow your business, follow up, good grief, follow up people. 
The fortune's in the follow-up. Right? We're, we're just... <laughs> the fortune is in the follow-up. Add value wherever you can. Any opportunity you get to add value to someone's life, share some expertise and knowledge, do it in good grief. Get your social media game on point. If you need some help, I know a guy or two. Ooh, that's us. <laughs> You can't see this if you're listening, but I'm dancing right now. John's dancing. Uh oh, dancing, baby. Damn. If, if we're lucky, maybe one day we'll get a we'll get John to break dance on the show. And uh, you sign up, I'll dance for you. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm talking about. Oh my god, I love it. You guys have a great day. <laughs> That's a great note to end on right there. John's gonna dance for you guys. Absolutely. So, y'all have a great day. Thanks for listening. You got anything for him, John? Don't forget. Go get where you work this year, baby. You deserve it. Amen. Amen. Y'all have a good one.